This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you start investing in that. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny and take care of you. What's up and welcome back to the kind of funny games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Someone help Coco. Oh, God. <laughs> Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. He's the globe trotting head shot from Twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. I've been dealing with a nose hair for the past couple of days, <laughs> sure. and I do not, I can't locate it, Tim. I can't locate it. <laughs> and of so course, <laughs> we have the new face of video games blessing at AOEA Jr. I got bit in both eyes by a snake over the weekend, and I'm oh, back. I'm back, and I'm stronger than ever. God. <laughs> You Some see, did you changed. see the comment on the podcast where somebody's like, I ho- why are they making fun of him? <laughs> Is he okay? <laughs> they really thought you got bit by a snake in both eyes. I live in daily, I, I guess there might be snakes here, but like, the, no, I didn't get bit, bit by a snake, as far as you know. That is good. That is good. And joining us for the very first time on the Kind of Funny Games cast, it is Uncle Phil himself, <laughs> Phil Spencer from Xbox. Hey, I got nothing. I got nothing. Like you guys are, you got these these lines teed up. I got. I didn't get bit in the eye by a snake. I, I probably do have a nose hair, but I'm like, I don't know. So uh, make fun of Pete Hines. Stuff. That's the easiest entrance. Just make fun of Pete. I'm afraid of Pete. Pete's a lot stronger and taller than I am. So no, but it's great to be on the show. Appreciate you having me on for the first time looking forward to it yeah it's very very exciting do you get to hang out with with pete a lot more now given the this whole relationship situation i talk to him more i mean obviously we're still i'm in the office but we're still not flying very much i've taken one trip out to bethesda for the roundtable thing that we did so i'm really looking forward to spending more time with the teams right now i'm kind of doing calls with all the studios uh talking about roadmap and stuff and sometimes pete's on those calls todd vaughn's on those calls some um, jamie's on those calls so it's I, I say the paint's still wet and us working together but uh just amazing team so and pete's a great guy you gotta like pete gotta like pete that is the truth and you know what else you gotta like this here show the kind of funny <laughs> games cast that you can get each and every week right here on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com if you want to get it as a podcast just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny games cast and we'll be right there for you if you want to get the show ad free and watch live as it's being recorded and get the exclusive post show you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like our patreon producers omega buster tyler ross delaney twinning julian the gluten gamer james hastings casey andrew elliott and tom bach have done thank you all so very much and thank you all for writing in your questions for phil that we'll be getting to later in this show today we're brought to you by honey sennheiser and titan but we'll talk all about that later don't want to waste any more time phil let's get right into it what are you playing right now (laughs) um i'm still playing a lot of destiny 2 I don't know why I care about the solstice armor, but I'm on the grind getting my solstice <laughs> armor. I don't know why, but I am. Uh, I was playing uh, Sea of Thieves. I love the new update. I saw Greg was on playing a little bit of that. Um, but was playing a little bit of the Psychonauts too. I got an early build from Tim and the team, and I kind of stopped because like I like the game a lot. I want to play the finished game. So I went back and finished Psychonauts 1, which was like time travel, going back and finishing that game. Uh, but just really looking forward to to that game launching and everybody getting to play uh, another great double fine game. So playing a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to play right now, which is fun. So my yeah. question immediately becomes, how do you balance that, Phil? Like, how do you go? You're like, you, you are on the grind for Destiny, like so many other people, or and all of us playing whatever game we're playing as a games as a service. But how do you balance that within the fact of, oh, I also have a build of Psychonauts too. Oh, I also have this other thing I need to look at for whatever unannounced. Like, you have so many games you need to be playing for work. How do you balance with what you want to play versus what you need to do for work? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty regimented. Uh, between the stuff I'm doing for work during work hours. And when I go home, like that's my time to just go play. I've got my crew that I play with uh, at night and I don't do a lot of work stuff. I don't play a lot of debug builds at night. And I've always been somebody who plays a lot of video games. It's just kind of been part of me since I was, uh, I was little. Uh, And I I just keep work stuff while I'm here kind of during the work hours. uh, And I have to keep it separate because I never want my love of the hobby of playing to kind of impact, it's also my job. And I, I need to keep those 
those two things uh, fairly separate. And I know sometimes like when I'm playing people online, they'll want to ask questions about work and I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> not in that mode. Like when I'm, I'm just in the, I mean, you and I have been in parties before and I'm not like PR guy. I'm just kind of somebody else playing. Um, so that's how I do it. I, I'm pretty regimented with my time. And that, yeah. that was the first thing you said to me too when I joined your party that one night to play Sea of Thieves with you. You were like, cool. And by the way, I'm an old man and I sign off at 10 o'clock every <laughs> that's day. That's right. And I was like, dang, that's a regiment. That's what I'm getting started at 10 o'clock. You're signing off. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go for it. Well, one thing I wanted to, to kind of point out, um, I think before we signed on, before we started this stream, Phil Spencer said, hey, I'm very open. You know, like feel free to ask me about anything. And Greg, I kind of want to touch on this is that Phil mentioned he's playing an early build of Psychonauts 2 and said, I want to wait for the finished product. I think Phil is maybe hinting that the game is completely broken. This is a bombshell. <laughs> Big breaking wow, news. Yeah. <laughs> You're the giving studio, up the free headlines today. To the get studio a is in shambles. The studio's in shambles, everybody. Huge. Crazy. Nah, Tim and the team. I've been a Schaefer fan. I mean, we worked, we were in Psychonauts early, early. We didn't end up publishing the original game, but uh, and just the work they did, Happy Action Theater they did for Connect, I thought was one of the best yeah. Connect games out there. Um, obviously, Brutal Legends, stuff that they've done over the years. And it was nice to get to work more closely with them, give them the time that I thought the studio could really use to build uh, an absolutely fantastic game. The game's done. Um, now it's just about kind of printing boxes, get everything, we're not doing it physical, uh, but get everything <laughs> ready for the uh, for the launch of the game and feel good about it. Yeah, it's just, I want the achievements. I'm kind of addicted to that yeah. little achievement pop. So when I'm playing the that. debug build, I don't get that. That's my I thing. respect that. I am weak. I am weak. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching right now? You know, I don't watch a ton of TV. Uh, that's That's kind of my... Maybe where I get away with how many hours, I get a lot of questions about how I can afford to play so much in terms of time. And you know, my, my, I have two daughters. They're both out of the house now. They're in college. Um, it's my wife and I. It's our 30th wedding anniversary this year. Hey. So happy anniversary, Kelly. Congrats. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. It's awesome. But so you know, we watch a couple shows together. Uh, we love Ted Lasso. Can't wait for the new season to start. But I kind of have like one or two shows that we watch together. And then uh, I play games and she sits and she'll read or she'll play some games. But yeah, I'm not actually much of a video. I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer. That's what I do. So uh, you bring up Ted Lasso and I, I don't know if you have any thoughts, but do you have any thoughts on Snowbike Mike, uh, who is our host of XCast <laughs> and his similarities to one Ted Lasso? <laughs> I think Snowbike's awesome. I just want to say that like the amount of positive energy that dude brings to the show is just fantastic and congrats to you guys for like giving him a platform and i think he does such an awesome job moderating i will say there's some similarities between he and ted lasso but only the best similar like only the best traits uh mike picks up but i just really i'm a i believe we're in a, a fantastic uh industry that's about bringing joy and happiness to people i love people who are positive about what they like and mike's just always been to me one of those guys when you, you just can't not be excited for him and his excitement of video games um when you listen to him and i just think that's so good so you know, I, I always thought it was really cool that you do listen to as many podcasts and you know and are as in the kind of ecosystem as as it seems like you are greg's always telling me every once in a while like oh yeah like like phil dm me you listen to gamescast or like you know who snowbike mike is like how much of your time is is listening to different types of podcasts like that? And how frustrated do you get listening to us be complete idiots all the time? <laughs> um, it's speaking of Kelly again, not to, I didn't realize I was gonna make this about my, so my wife and I actually went to high school together. So she's, she's seen my life as a comic book reading, you know, a video game playing person's kids since I was a kid driving my Ford Pinto. And she likes to tease me that I found the one job on the planet that I might actually be somewhat qualified to go do, which is this uh, this job. So we talk about like consuming things about video games or reading comics or whatever. You know, it's just it is just who I am. Uh, so I love I, I take I have two dogs. I take them to the park on the weekends. I sit with my headphones and I walk and I listen to podcasts and it's where I get caught up. I always get a lot out of the questions that you guys tackle. Uh, it's always really helpful to me because it's easy for me to get stuck in a bubble of the things I'm working on, the people I work with, and being able to break out of that bubble and get perspectives from other people, even if it's perspectives I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, I just think it's really useful in my position to not just listen to the echo chamber, which is me talking and hearing it reflected back and to hear what others are thinking about. So when I'm listening to you guys, 
and I see the things that you're tackling, the things that you find funny even, but um, the questions that you have, uh, I, I find it just very useful in my position to have those perspectives as we're trying to chart our path forward. But is it not maddening? I have like I when I'm on a games when I'm not on games daily and I listen to games daily and I hear them go like oh I don't know who made that and I'm like yelling it in my head or like I I'm know, like oh what you you hear us and we're like well clearly because of X Y has to happen you know like, that's not how games get made that's not at all how it goes <laughs> I don't like I don't want a soapbox on this one I will say it is sometimes surprising to me like how this industry works, the business side of it, I think is pretty important. You guys are, are knowledgeable about that. Like I hear in your conversation, I'm not just playing to you because I'm on the podcast with you guys, True. that like, I think you you know some friends that are uh, friends of yours that are devs and you've kind of seen the business side. Because sometimes the things that will get frustrated is when somebody asks a question, I wonder why this doesn't happen. And, and you kind of, well, if, if you thought, if you knew how the business worked, and that's not like some kind of cabal that knows how the business works, it's pretty transparent. <laughs> um, like you would know why certain things, what, what's a good example? Um, GoldenEye. GoldenEye is always the perfect example. Why don't I just go remake GoldenEye? That is a question you guys have tackled. But then if like you kind of tease that apart and all the mess the rights are with the bond and like it being on N64 and how do we go make those things happen? Uh, but so I, I think it's helpful when, people kind of do some work to understand how the industry works. If I get frustrated, sometimes it's questions that like one or two Google searches might give you the answer for something. And people don't do that. Like that does frustrate me. I was, I was really <laughs> thinking Phil's answer was going to go. It is amazing how uninformed y'all are. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You've no. built an audience just <laughs> by talking nonsense. <laughs> and you're kind of funny. No. <laughs> You know, one thing that we, we talk about a lot, like since we have so many shows that talk about games and from the various uh, places, whether it's Games Daily, that's more the news focused or Games Cast, yeah. which is more just our experience playing games. Like one thing that I've always been really interested in is the showcases and the production of a press conference or a showcase or whatever. And being able to to have you, somebody that is on the stage, a kind of a, a, one of the faces of the one of the biggest type of game showcases cases. What is your thoughts on video game showcases in 2021? And like, what do you, what do you think? Who's doing it well? Who's not doing it well? And like, what, what do you want to see more of or less of in the future? Yeah. You know, I was, I usually don't talk overly positive about the work that our teams do. I, I think it'd be a little bit rooting for the home team, but I do want to say, I was really proud of the feedback that the teams took from last year's game play showcase that we talked about in May that lacked gameplay, uh, the feedback on the end of July show of 20 and sure. how the team internalized the community feedback that we got and built the Xbox and Bethesda showcase of this year and how they executed on that. I mean, I'm just, you know, the guy that comes out on stage and reads a teleprompter, like I kind of have the easiest job of anybody in the show. Um, but the production value, I thought the pacing, we did a little thing earlier in the week with Satya where we did kind of more of an industry and analyst thing. Uh, we released some of that stuff. Then we did the showcase. And then we did the extended thing with Paris. And I thought the three beats that the team lined up for that worked really well. And obviously, you know, we looked at how Treehouse works and like some of the, the, some of the work that Nintendo has done around going a little bit deeper on some of the games. And that was a motivation for us with Extended. Um, I think Sony has done a nice job in like just having Corey or somebody come out with a controller in their hand and just playing. Um, and we took some feedback there that we need some more kind of extended sessions of people seeing people, what it would look like from the perspective of somebody playing. Maybe that stuff seems obvious to everybody who's watching this saying, Duffel, you should have known that all along. Um, um, but I like our the fidelity in our our games has risen to a level where I literally think you could just do you know six, seven, eight minutes of gameplay and put some of the storytelling elements in and you don't actually have to get in front of that uh, with kind of too many talking heads or, or other stuff. And I think the industry's done a good job of moving along, obviously embracing what it means to work in a hybrid. There's no people in the audience. I miss that. I hope next year that we do something with at least some live audience. I, 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 I didn't love that about this year just because it's different walking on a soundstage than it is walking out with a, a theater full of a bunch of rabid community members who are just going crazy and are excited about games. So I hope that part comes back. But the work that goes in, you know, you look at a show like that, it's like nine, 10 months worth of production work 
that goes into putting together a 90 minute showcase. And um, I'm going to applaud anybody that has the, the the kind of bravery to go and try that in a new way and, and land something. It's just, it's, it's remarkable that we, that the industry got those things done. Always learning, but uh, I'm just, I'm proud of the work that the industry did. Now, real quick, you brought it up. So I'll do this for this extended showcase business. I'm glad you got to work with Paris once. Stay away from them. All right. <laughs> it was, it was a, you know, Alana was great. And then she has to go work at PlayStation. If I know, you steal I know. Paris, there will be problems, Phil. I don't want to say anything on camera that'll get me in trouble with the law eventually. But if I got to replace another X cast host, it was so good because he had a green room in the back. And there was a, I almost took a picture of Paris Lily green room, just like this. It was right outside of his green room. There was a sign on the door. I like how I control him with this forever. But he did such a great job. It's just uh, awesome to have him. Fantastic. Job. Becoming yeah. a diva. Like, I, I wanted green M&Ms. What the hell? Like, <laughs> exactly. Want, like, all <laughs> green everything. We're like yeah. one show away from that. Phil, I was going to ask. I was going to ask real quick. Um, are there any. Uh, one thing I really love about you and your social media presence is just how kind of loving you all of our of our of all games right like you'll talk about i'm playing this sony game uh, this nintendo game is really great are there any sort of dream collabs that you would love to do that you probably think ah it's probably impossible but in a different universe i would love to see maybe this character in that game or vice versa you know i and this is just maybe my lack of creativity i don't think about games that way like i i kind of think about First, I'm a gameplay first. It's just how I've always felt when I kind of dissect a game that we're working on. I always want to know what does it feel like every five seconds? How, like, what's that loop and how do I feel? And then I kind of go to story and character. It's just my my, my kind of mode. I will say in terms of collabs all up, and I'm going to go to things that are kind of things that we've cared about for a while. I love cross-play. I love the ability to kind of talk to anybody who's playing anywhere, play with anybody who's playing anywhere. I'm not trying to get on the, the kind of Xbox thing. But the collaboration that I... I'm really excited about is just players being able to play with each other regardless of where they are. I think some of the limitations and friction that we put uh, for kind of general consumers that come into gaming um, are only understood by those of us that have been in this industry for a long time of why doesn't this work with that? And even trying to explain it to somebody at this point uh, kind of is, is a challenge. I will say though, thinking more about the question, I do worry a little bit about losing our art form and the history of it and you know what when i think about like old roms and mame and these things of like where these old games are going to go as the hardware that's capable of running these or running those games or uh, kind of interpreters and and emulation systems i really wish as an industry we'd come together to help preserve the history of what gaming is about so we don't lose the ability to go back. I think about like what the Paley Center did for TV of, you know, Paley early on saw that TV industry was getting ready to throw away literally the tapes that these old TV shows were on. And he said, hey, I want to archive those because at some point somebody will want to go back and watch the Ed Sullivan show or something. And those things shouldn't be thrown away. And as an industry, I would love it if we came together to help preserve the history of, of what our industry is about so we don't lose access to some of the um, the things that got us to where we are today and built this industry. That would be a cool thing. Expanding on that a little bit, uh, Webnet wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and asked, what is the future of games preservation at Xbox and how will Microsoft preserve game history as the team develops cloud focused titles? A bonus question is, will Dance Central 1 through 3, Dance Central Spotlight <laughs> or other Connect games ever get backwards compatibility support for Series X and S? Yeah, Connect is hard just because we don't, we don't support the device on them. And that's like one of the things about games when you get to real bespoke hardware, I go back to like Steel Battalion or something like, you know, a game that I'd love to see, but, uh, and you can actually play some of those games with controller. On the preservation, one of the things that the cloud does offer us is the ability to throw more hardware at some of the emulation scenarios to make it possible to really emulate. Like we were kind of luck, not lucky, the teams did amazing work, but when the team figured out how to emulate PowerPC instruction sets on an x86 set, which was how we went from 360 to Xbox One back compat, like we were kind of lucky that the Xbox One had enough processing power to pull off that emulation of, a, again, a PowerPC um, on top of that, of that x86 chip. 
when we're in the cloud, we don't have to worry about the local compute capability to emulate some of those older systems. Most of those older systems are pretty low, uh, low spec, so it's not a huge issue. But I, I do like that we're able to kind of elevate it beyond just the device that somebody has in their home. And I have nothing against somebody buying a retro console and running things in their home. But for the, the preservation, and it's one of the things as we look at the cloud and why we continue on some our back compat work, which we are still working on, is because I want those games to still uh, be playable and not even just from an Xbox standpoint, like take Psychonauts. We were just talking about it. I want somebody to be able to play Psychonauts regardless of what controller they want to use or what platform they originally bought it on. Uh, I want that game to be accessible and people should play that after they play Psychonauts 2 and they love it and they say, well, why is bacon in the game? And what is that? Why did that? Where did that come from? You should go back and play Psychonauts 1 and 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 see where the, the kind of origins of those things are. So the cloud does make uh, some of those things more possible for us. And then another follow-up from that, Amen writes in and says, uh, my question pertains to the role of legacy IP within Game Pass. Like so many other Xbox fans out there, I was incredibly excited to see a new Fable revealed at last year's Xbox Game Showcase. Almost immediately afterwards, I hopped onto Game Pass and did a playthrough of Fable Anniversary. Does the ease of access to legacy IP installments within Game Pass incentivize the rebooting of older franchises? Not only are you bringing an exciting new game to market, you're recontextualizing the importance of previous iterations available in Game Pass. And thank you for injecting gaming with so much positivity and excitement. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for that. Uh, absolutely, it does. I mean, a little bit even as a tastemaker of seeing what, like take Prey, which I think was an amazing game when it came out, but a lot of people missed Prey. It's a little too scary for me. But um, seeing now... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not a scary game player. But <laughs> Seeing more people playing something like Prey or Dishonored or you, know, you can go back to Fable, you can talk about those games. And us, as we sit back as a creative organization and watch what people are interested in, um, it, it allows us, it gives us just more data to think about things that we might pick up uh, and, and take forward uh, with new ideas and new teams that might want to go do that. So yeah, Game Pass is definitely been a great source. It was amazing when Bethesda came in and we were able to put so many of the kind of old new games or new old games, however you want to say it, uh, in the Game Pass. And going back through the legacy that we have with some of the IP, you know, even thinking about things like Rare Replay was a really interesting thing for us to go do and letting people go and experience some of the, the old Rare IP. Uh, we'll stay on that because I think it Game Pass gives us a business model where that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a gas version of a game. It could just be, hey, this game sits there and people enjoy it in the service. Plus. You mentioned you mentioned Rare Replay. Is there another oh, studio you'd like to do like a similar kind of collection with? Fossa. Like when I think of Fossa and Jordan Weissman and the stories of like, there's nothing like this is not a pre preview of something we're getting ready to announce. But when I think of the work that Jordan did, we think of Shadowrun, Crimson, Mech. Like there's just some fantastic deep stories and worlds there uh, that I we didn't do a good job as a company managing the FOSA acquisition and kind of how that came about and the studio ended up, it was just not a great, not our best moment um, as Xbox in managing a studio, but the team there and the creative work that they did um, with some of those franchises was so strong um, and being able to, there's some rights issues with some of those and things, but just, if you ask me just kind of flat out, if there was a studio in our past that I'd love to see us be able to open up that catalog and allow more people to play. FOSS is definitely at the top of the list for me. You also mentioned uh, bespoke hardware and connect and stuff that's kind of come and gone and hard to bring forward in terms of legacy games. Do, do you guys do you guys have like a a planned like VR or AR, any sort of peripheral device that you think could work with Xbox in the future, given that that is such a difficult thing to work with nowadays? No, not really. Like we're we're watching, we're watching what happens on PC um, as it relates to VR specifically. The best experience I've seen is Quest Two, and I just think it's untethered, kind of <laughs> the ease of use, be it untethered in its capability, just doesn't to me require it being connected to an Xbox in any way. So when I look at a scenario like that, I think about xCloud, I think about the Xbox Live community, I think about other things of how can we bring content to a screen like that, whether we do it something like that through first party or third party partnerships, I think is kind of a second step to do we think that the games that we currently have that we're able to run on our platform um, would work there. 
when I, I think about our hardware roadmap and our, I really love the uh, evolution of Liz Hamron's team, our hardware team and the work that they've done. We're definitely thinking about different kinds of devices that can bring more games to, in, to more places. Um, but we probably, you know, there's some, probably some work we'll do on controller. I think, you know, Sony's done a nice job with their controller. We kind of look at some of that and are there things that we should go do? Um, but probably not in the just more bespoke accessories place right now. We just watch what happens on Windows and another place and see if there's a unique opportunity for us right now. I, I don't think there's anything that's obvious to me. Um, yeah, the- Phil, you've played Elden Ring. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you still got that dev kit? Or no, no. Dev no kit I was, or? It okay. was, well... You know, Miyazaki is somebody I have a ton of respect for. In fact, I think I have a sign Sekiro, or I think it's right there. Oh, wow. um, oh, and it. somebody, every time I, I go to, I say every time, most times I go to Japan, I like to go by from and just sit down and talk to him about what he's seeing in games. I remember sitting down and looking at game, uh, watching his games on Mixer and just like the discussion with him around as these services, Twitch and other things were evolving and just seeing how, Quickly, he internalizes new paradigms coming to games, rolling that into his future ideas. The guy's just brilliant. So I can sit down with them, and we've we've obviously been talking to them about any game that they're building. We need to make sure we have a great platform for them, and seeing builds of the games and talking to them about creatives. I mean, that's one of the this the most awesome parts of this job is to sit down with our own teams and and third party creatives. I, you know, I, I know most of the games that teams are working on for the next three or four years because we need to be a great platform for those games um, and getting to see the, their iterate creatively, giving them feedback if they want it. If not, it's fine. They're, they're a lot better at designing games than I'll ever be um, is, uh, is yeah, it's one of the most rewarding parts of the job. And I think Miyazaki-san is just one of the most special designers in our industry, and I love spending time with him. You mentioned the Sekiro thing uh, on the shelf behind you. How much thought is put into the shelf behind you? And zero. Are, has, has, zero. There been, has there been moments where you're just like, I, I know what I'm doing and I shouldn't do this right now and you do it no. anyway? It's, <laughs> it, it's probably a mistake on my part. Like I, I think about <laughs> the whole t-shirt thing. Like my t-shirt thing started because one of the E3s was right near Father's Day. It might have been on Father's Day. And my dad and I played Jumpman back on our C64 together. Wow. I found a Jumpman t-shirt. And I wore that. It became like a thing. And stupidly, I kind of ran with it. And then obviously this time around, I did the Series S behind me and I did some hiding. But this back here is really just a, a collection of, of things from people I know in the industry and friends and um and and that's about it. Like I'm not trying to signal anything. Don't lie I, to uh, our faces, Phil. All right, <laughs> no, we can I'm all serious. read between the lines. No, we see it. We like, know what I'm it means. Looking, like this picture up here is Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. We're not buying Led Zeppelin, right? It's just, exclusive. It's my favorite yeah. band. Yeah. Right. So and we're that, seeing <laughs> we see that switch though. I see that switch up in the corner. Uh, pizza that, bagel the, lights in. The the switch Wait, was the switch? A, a a gift from Nintendo. Like. Uh, Doug Bowser and the team, uh, they're, they're obviously right up the hill from us. We're both in Redmond, Washington, um, and it was a gift from them. I have another one that I used to play at home, but that was one that they gave me early on when it launched. So that's what that's from. This show is brought to you by Honey. We all shop online and we've all seen that promo code Field Tanis at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupon codes it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you watch the prices drop. Kind of funny, loves Honey. Tim Gettys himself tells you all the time to click that dang Honey button. It saved him and many of us here kind of funny, plenty of money when we use Honey. Honey has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I never recommend something we don't use. Get Honey for free at join honey.com slash kinda that's joinhoney.com slash kinda this show is also brought to you by sennheiser listen i love quality when it comes to earbuds it's all about sound quality which is why you need to check out sennheiser they make the best earbuds that money can buy the new momentum true wireless twos 
deliver the best listening experience that have been finely crafted for even the most discerning listener. With their free smart control app, you can adjust the sound to your personal preference with the built-in equalizer. With up to 28 hours battery life, these earbuds can last you all day and then some. Let me tell you, I can confirm that because I, ever since I started using these earbuds, they have not died once. <laughs> All right, I've not used them for years or anything like that. It's only been uh, like a week or so that I've had these things, but I love them and they keep a charge like nothing else that I own. Right now for my first 100 listeners who go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast and use promo code KFGAMES, you'll receive 15% off the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds or any of their amazing products. Uh, that's 15% off when you go to S-E-N-N-H-E-I-S-E-R dot com slash podcast and use our promo code KF Games. Last but not least, we're brought to you by Titan. For far too long, Wall Street has neglected the average investor, giving out the same old generic advice like buy index funds. Meanwhile, for the ultra wealthy, they get access to premium investment strategies and white glove service. That divide didn't sit well with Titan, so they built a premier investment firm, but for everyone. Thanks to Titan, now everyday investors can have their capital invested like a world-class investment firm all through the Titan mobile app. Titan's goal is to give you the access to the best investment experience in the world, but without the high minimums, lockups, or performance fees. Their in-house investment team invests your capital using award-winning strategies and deliver daily research updates via the Titan app. It's like having an elite investment manager in your pocket. Titan manages hundreds of millions of dollars for 25,000 clients and counting, and were named the 2020 top investment app of the year by US News. To get started, download the Titan app, start investing with Titan today, and get three months of zero fees. Visit titanvest.com slash kfgames. That's three months with zero fees at titanvest.com slash kfgames. I love it. Uh, Pizza Bagel writes in and says, I wanted to ask Phil about the relationship Xbox has continued to establish and grow with Nintendo and its platform. What was the process like to bring Banjo to Smash Brothers or to have Xbox exclusive games and characters like Cuphead appear in Smash and be on the Switch platform? Can we expect to see titles continue to grow and more Nintendo stuff, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to say about this, I'm really interested in how that all happened. You know, first of all, and, and I don't just say this because it, it, it sounds good. I think Nintendo is just such a special part of our industry. They bring so many players both into the industry, but also continue to excite people. And they're so unique in what they can do. I mean, they're, let's face it, they're selling tens of millions, hundred million handheld devices in today's world. And it doesn't even have a cell chip in it, right? It's not an LTE <laughs> device. Like they're the only company on the planet that could go do a bespoke mobile compute device that isn't actually Android or iOS, doesn't make phone calls and have the success. They're just like a, a special, special uh, company. So, and, and I have a, a lot of friends that have worked there for years. And frankly, they're so close. There's a lot of shared DNA uh, between the teams. Ken Lobb on our team here was uh, a Nintendo employee a long time ago. And as I said, there's um, people up there. Firakawa san the CEO of Nintendo and I um, talk fairly often. He's a, a gamer. It's fun to talk to him about games. So it's really just about building a trust relationship that there's there's no hand behind the back. There's no ulterior motives. Let's just go do things that help grow the industry. Now, my top line is, and this will get a little businessy, so I'll apologize, but this is an industry that's $200 billion a year. That's the size of the gaming industry right now. And it's growing. Last year grew by 19%. And when I think about our opportunity, whether it's Sony, whether it's Nintendo, whether it's us, whether it's any of the publishers, whether it's Valve, any of us, I think the biggest opportunity ahead of us as an industry is how do we keep growing as an industry? How do we keep together growing? And I don't see the pie as a fixed pie that we have to grow in order for our slice of the pie to grow. Somebody else's has to get smaller. Like when I look at an industry, we're the biggest media and entertainment industry in the planet. We're bigger than movies, bigger than TV, bigger than music. Like gaming is just such a massive business with such huge growth right now. I think as an industry, the more we can work together to remove some of the friction and some of the kind of arbitrariness um, of this industry just makes it better. I'd say the same thing about focusing on safety, focusing on inclusion. Like these are all huge opportunities and they're good things for humans. And they're also good things for the business. So when opportunity comes to work with a Valve or work with Nintendo or work with Sony on something, if we think it's gonna help grow the industry and we can all benefit from that together, I think it just makes a ton of sense for us to go do that. Do you have any stories about Banjo specifically getting into Smash? 
specific. So one of the things we do with uh, our, our studio IP is we really let Rare go and drive that directly with Nintendo. Obviously, they have you know decades of history between Rare and Nintendo. And that's something that Craig Duncan and the team drove directly. I'll get asked, like, hey, do I have any issue with this? Obviously, I wouldn't. I think it's awesome seeing uh, Banjo and Smash. But that's something that we Rare would go and, and drive. And the same thing as you look at some of the Bethesda stuff that's happening out there some of the work they're doing with Doom and some of the, whether it's NVIDIA and some of the other stuff, I really want to empower the creators. I know Matt Booty and I are pretty in sync, we're very in sync on this. Empower the creators to feel and truly they own the franchises they're working on. They own those characters, those stories and those worlds and let them be the, uh, the, the kind of captain on the ship on those things. And I don't want me to be the one who's trying to come in and trying to match make in certain scenarios. So that was something that Craig and the team at Rare drove directly with Nintendo and I was more than supportive. I thought it was awesome. Uh, getting into some more Patreon questions here. Mizuki says, hey, Phil, I looked around a bit and couldn't find an answer for this. So I'm asking it here. What's the story behind your gamer tag P3? Huh. Uh, so it's not a great, it's not a very interesting story. Uh, <laughs> You're like, oh, I, man, this is not going to be uh, what you wanted it to be. <laughs> I am, uh, my name, my actual full name is Philip Wesley Spencer III. And growing up, my dad was always Phil Jr. and I was P3 because my grandfather was Phil Sr. Sure. So Phil Sr., Phil Jr. So growing up, we'd be at family things. I was always P3. Um, cool. So <laughs> when I got to create my gamer tag, I'm also lazy. So the fewer characters I can type, the better. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's Phil the third, uh, P3. That's where it comes from. Now I have a question for Tim. Tim, since that uh -huh. story is from Phil Spencer, are we still allowed to make fun of Fran for being Fran Mirabella the third? Oh yeah, FM3. <laughs> okay, definitely, sure. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, he's FM3 underscore, so that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole other thing. There uh, is a funny story on this one. Just quickly, quickly. The, go for it. We were do I forget what show it was. One of the e I think one of our E3s where my gamer tag was gonna show up. This was before I was in my position. And there was some somebody had some weirdness about it looking like PS3. Um, so <laughs> they actually created like something cause the graphic had already been created with P3. So I ended up as like PB and jelly or something. Cause they could put the B over the three and just uh. like superimpose the graphic over it, which I thought was totally silly that somebody thought my gamer tag would look like PS3 and that we were, I don't know, and that it meant something with Sony. But anyway, that's a funny little story from E3's gone by. That, more importantly it, like there's like... this there's some random pb and j out there <laughs> getting all these messages like i don't well, i don't work what are you talking about that is e3. <laughs> does it feel like it's an e3 of of days gone by like are it, is the industry in a different place now where it, it that what you just said kind of feels a little bit more like there's competition whereas now i feel like everything's a little bit more collaborative um I don't know. I mean, I, there's clearly collaboration. I think to some level there always has been. I think you're right. I think there's more collaboration, more kind of relationships uh, than maybe there have been in the past between the, the major platform holders. I think that's true. I'll say it like, you know, I watch State of Play. I watch the Nintendo shows. I want our shows to 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 be to do well for people to talk about them. So I think in, in, in a hopefully a positive way. I look at the bar that others set when they're out there, whether what they do with their products. I'm really a product person first and foremost, and try to feel like, what do these products feel like? I like being inspired and motivated by what other people do. So I definitely watch all the shows and say, okay, how do I feel we stacked up from uh, like a presentation and entertainment value, uh, those kind of things. And I want everybody to do their best work. And I just want us to do great work and be kind of counted up there as one of the best. I think that goes so far and it's what we always talk about about you and about Xbox now in the way that, you know, the fact that you're able to be in front of the brand and be like leading it. Right. And talking about it like a human being, because I do go back to I remember at IGN in 2010 doing interviews with people from Xbox, people from PlayStation and them, you know, when you get to saying if you're a PlayStation guy getting ready to say something about Xbox, the other guys and vice versa for <laughs> Xbox. Right. And I was like, such a weird thing back to what you're talking about of pb and j right of like, i know so everybody knows what you're saying and they are like why are we in, you may, you're making a bigger deal not saying it i think the fact that you are so open to talk about what you play elsewhere or what other people are doing or what you're watching goes so far to you know prove i think something we learned a long time ago about youtube right of like it's not so much about uh competition it's about collaboration and what can you do to move the space forward i think that's exactly right I and mean, uh 
I think that the companies that have been and gone, the companies that have been around and are here, um, and the companies that are getting created today that'll be the leaders of this industry in the next decade, uh, like they all have a role to play. And as I said, I think that the biggest obstacle to gaming success is our own industry and focusing on making it safe for everybody, continuing to grow, to moving obstacles, some of the still stigma around what does it mean to be a gamer, even that whole term of why is somebody a gamer and not a gamer? Like, what does that mean? Um, I think those are the things that are in front of us. It's not whether one company is like going to be our demise. I, I think as an industry where we, we have we have the control, like we can we can navigate this industry's growth together better than we can independently. I believe that. Something I've always found really interesting is there's E3 week and, you know, that's cha changed and transitioned over yeah. time. But the idea of there is this season of everybody coming out in a short amount of time doing their thing uh, that is that is part of one whole, but really it's individual things. And then the end of the year having the Game Awards, I've always loved that it's this one moment where everyone shares one stage. Yeah, it, Is that thought about differently, like what you're going to bring to that show versus an E3 type show? Yeah. Yeah. We, the production timelines are now long enough. Like we have pretty good sense of what we're doing at the game awards already. Um, you just have to, and even what's going to be at E3 next year, not that everything's necessarily going to land exactly. Or we won't have some surprises, but our roadmap for when we're going to talk about things is probably planned out next two or three years. And you're right. Like you, Game Awards and Jeff's done a really nice job building that as an important beat for the industry. We're obviously not trying to sell something right then. We're kind of in the middle of the selling season for the stuff that's out. So we try to be a little more forward looking in some of the things that we're trying to go do. E3, I love E3 week. I, I hope the industry continues to support it in some ways. I'm not sure. Um, I hope, you know, my plan is for us that uh, as much as we can, I like the consolidated news week. I think it helps us as an industry rise above some of the din of everything that's going out there um, and, and get picked up by some outlets that maybe wouldn't focus on gaming um, without that concentration. And definitely E3, we're starting to look at, okay, what's coming this fall? What's coming in the next 12 months? And that show has turned into more of a, here, here's our timeline. You saw it with the showcase this year. It's here's what's in June. Here's what's in July. Here's what's in August. And yeah, the Game Awards are much... Are, a little kind of more forward looking and, and maybe a little more theatrical just given the way the show's uh, set up. Before we move on to uh, the, the bless who do you have any final questions for Phil here? Um, I ha really quickly wanted to say that I love that you teamed up with Greg in Sea of Thieves and I am inviting you to come join me, Tim and Snowback Mike for Halo Infinite whenever that comes out. We Watch hope you flight. become our part Let's of the go. team, Phil. Awesome. I, I love, uh, That'd be great. I love playing online. Like I said, I, lo I love just hanging out with people who enjoy playing video games. I uh, love to play Infinite, definitely. Blessing, you're invited too. You're invited too. You invite Blessing. Yeah. Phil, I'll, I'll go one play, further. I know how it is. <laughs> Phil, I'll go one further and remind you that the War for Wakanda expansion is coming to Marvel's <laughs> Avengers. And if you would like for me to pull a character at 150 for you, we can do that. We can help you out. Just like put it on the table for you. I do have to say, Greg and I dropped in a party. It was like a couple weeks ago. And I asked him, hey, what are you playing? I wasn't expecting like the first thing. I mean, I mean, knew he like I'm watching the show. I knew that Avengers was something that it was like the first thing. It did. I don't even think I had the question Dude, come out of my mouth. If yet. you like, like Avengers, guys, Avengers, that's what I play. Avengers, that's my gun. Silence. <laughs> I was like, I've been invited to Phil Spencer's Xbox party. I'm hanging out. He's like, well, we're playing Sea of Thieves. I know you play this. What what other multiplayer games do you play? And I'm like, Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> dead silence on this entire group you've been booted from the party <laughs> no no i no and you know the team at crystal uh it's i have respect for all games and what people are trying to do it wasn't what i expected um but you know, more power to you, you I, I think love me up a character i'll go play i think one thing about it is with greg it's it's getting into that meme territory for sure and it reminds me greg of that final fantasy 14 meme that's like did you know that you could play uh, the DLC for free and all this stuff? And yeah, it's like yeah. this gigantic sort of letter that all the Final <laughs> Fantasy 14 fans put out there. Greg is the same way with Avengers. I love yeah, it. Just let everybody know it's coming. It's coming back. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. We'll make a threat level mission next month. Pretty or this awesome. month. I'm sorry. Awesome. Everybody should go play it. Love to get it. <laughs> so, so here on the Kind of Funny Games cast, we like to do a show called Bless Who, a little a game show within a show uh, that we normally have as the post show. 
But since we have Phil here, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to do a special version of it. Barrett, please hit the theme song. Bless who is bless who. Yo, what's Thank up? Welcome much. to Bless Who, the Games Cast quiz segment hosted by yours truly. I'm joined today by Greg Miller, Andy Bye. Cortez, Tim Geddes, and Xbox's Phil Spencer. Fellas, are you ready for messy mashup? Yes. Absolutely. The rules are simple. I'm going to read to you a clue, which will be the description of a game. The answer will be the name of two games mashed up together. Whoever gives me the correct mashed up answer first gets the point. For example, in this game, sneak through top-down corridors while defending the planet from alien invasion. The answer there, of course, would be Metal Gears of War. Players, you say your name to buzz in. Each player gets one guess at a time. This time around, we have a maximum of five rounds. Whoever gets uh, to two points first gets the win. And to clear it up for Phil, it's always sort of a play on words. So if there's like, if it's like, what did Tim Schaefer work on in an underwater game? It would be psychonautical, like psychonauts and subnautical, subnautical. There's always a little play on words. Just tell me how much money I owe at the end of this. (laughs) (laughs) This one does have a modifier. This is the Game Pass edition of Ah, Yeah, man. For each of these prompts, one or both of these games will be on Game Pass currently. If you guess the correct mashup, you get an extra point if you can tell me which games are the Game Pass games. Are you ready? (laughs) Yes, yes. ready. Number one. This 2D action platformer puts you in the shoes of our favorite bounty hunter. This time, take your adventure on the go. Don't play alone, though, as this launch title comes packed with 45 different mini-games for up to four players. Remember, you say your name to buzz in. Oh, Pim. Tim. Metroid Fusion Frenzy. Correct. Damn can you it. tell me <laughs> which? <laughs> can you tell me which of those games are on Game Pass? That, would, in fact, would be Fusion Frenzy. That is correct. That is When's two that points for Tim back? right there. That's that's what I need to know, Phil. <laughs> Uh, blessing i'm sorry as a host i have a question for you uh in the middle of that kevin came in to pick up some phones and kiss me on the cheek so it's not just game pass i'm sorry it's it's any kind of game in the world mashed up with a game pass game one game has to be a game pass game at least one game is All a right, game thank you pass very much game. i yep. apologize number two i said i said first to two points i'm just going to go through the five because i realized that tim just automatically got two points there i, for- I forgot Fusion how quickly that could so happen number two Get ready to enter your giant mech in fast-paced action where wall running and first-person shooting will be your key Andy. to victory and most... Andy. Fallout. No, a Titan Fallout 4. Incorrect. Get ready Shit. to enter your giant mech Greg. in fast-paced... Greg. Titan Fall, guys. Incorrect. Get ready to enter your giant mech in fast-paced action where wall running and first-person shooting will be your key to victory in multiplayer matches. Explore an open wasteland inspired by Nevada and make friend or foe Andy. Titan Fallout New Vegas. Correct. Can you tell me which of those games is a Game Pass game? Well, Titan Falls part of the EA Play Play thing. EA Play, I am I am going to count as Game Pass. Oh, okay. They're both of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Because that is definitely yeah, both New Vegas of, is there. Yeah. Both of them are on Game Pass. That is two points for Andy right there. Right now, so the score is oh, Andy okay. two, <laughs> Tim two. I'm just gonna be horrible at this. Keep going. I mean, this is like I'm just like watching the show. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking your dogs. And you're yeah, yeah, that's your right. dogs. <laughs> Brilliance <laughs> might strike you, and you're gonna feel yeah. so good. Oh, okay. yeah. It's like it's a eureka moment. Number three. In this asymmetrical multiplayer game, fear becomes reality as one player plays the role of a serial killer hunting down four other players. You'll need to, you'll need to survive in this post-apocalyptic zombie-infested world. With up to 60 players, there are no checkpoints or saves. When you die, you lose everything and have to start over. I know it. In this asymmetrical multiplayer game, yeah, fear becomes reality as one player plays the role of a serial killer hunting down four other players. You'll need to survive in this post-apocalyptic zombie-infested world. Andy. Andy. No, shit. Never mind. I'll... <sighs> With up to 60 players, there are no checkpoints or saves. When you die, you lose everything and have to start over. I'll give you 10 seconds. If you can't guess it, I'm moving on to the next one. Andy. Andy. Dead by Daisy. Correct. The answer yeah. is Dead by Daisy. Ah. Can you tell me which of those games is on Game Pass? Dead by Daylight? Incorrect. Both games are on, day pa- are on Game Pass. Oh. You get Dead by Daylight and Daisy 
on Game what Pass. What a deal. Wow, the, Xbox Game Pass, the best game, <laughs> the deal, the best game. In, Dude. You know, I'm trying to say, God dang it, I can't get any points on the board. <laughs> Greg, Greg, I know you were stuck on State of Decay. I had right? no, I was dead by daylight. It was I couldn't come. I didn't even think of Daisy. Yeah, because I was like, I was like, dead by State of Decay. No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah I, I had was, Friday I was, the Thirteenth, so I was like, uh, <laughs> that's what happens. You get hung up on one game, and if it's the wrong yeah. game, you're in trouble. Yeah. Right now, the score is Andy three, Tim two, Greg and Phil zero. Number four, stranded on the shores of a mysterious island, you must learn to survive. Use your cunning to kill or tame the prehistoric creatures roaming the land. This next generation multiplayer shooter features addictive 4v1 gameplay. One player control controlled monster Greg. must evade Greg. <sighs> Arc Evolve. Andy. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm oh, gonna give it to you. That's good. That was good. The answer Arc is Arc Survivor, Survival Evolve. Evolve. Yeah. Well, he Greg. gave it to me, Andy, so shove it. All right, I don't know what you're going to do. What do you want to do, Andy? All right, I'm not going to apologize to you. Craig, Go which of those games are on Game Pass? Uh, Ark? Correct, Ark is the Game Pass game. Greg gets two points. Nice. This is the final Sucks question. To be last, huh, this Phil? is humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> this is number five is the last one. I do have a bonus round if you do run into a, a tiebreaker. Number five. This is an epic action adventure through a vast ruined kingdom of insects and heroes. Explore twisting caverns and more in this 2D hand drawn style game with Souls like and Metroidvania elements. Once you're done exploring, saddle up for a bike riding, frisbee throwing, goose petting, friendship building, treasure hunting, story driven adventure for one to two players. Uh, Andy. Andy. Hollow Knights and Bikes. Correct. Hollow wow. Knights and Bikes is wow. the answer. I'm Andy. incredible. Which of those games are on Game Pass? It's definitely not Hollow Knight. Uh, Knights and Bikes? Incorrect. Hollow Knights and Knights and Bikes are both oh, on shut Game the Pass. the front door. Yeah, gaming. man. Best deal in gaming. Best deal in gaming right there. <laughs> Andy wins with four points. It's Andy four. Greg and Good Tim job. two. Phil, unfortunately, zero. gets a zero. Though, okay. Phil, it's hard to jump in. It's a hard one to jump into. Yeah. I can no, give you one right. more shot if you want it. No, no, no. I'm just humiliating no, okay. myself okay. at this point. <laughs> Let the man go. He <laughs> We kept him past his heart out. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I do, I do want to add, Phil, with one more question, because I think this was a really good one from Ryan Powella Higgins. Uh, I remember reading an article back in 2014 talking about Phil when he took over as head of Xbox. In the article, it said that Phil's most important moment in Xbox history was the launch of Xbox Live. Is this still the case? Um... In terms of the impact to where we are today, I would say yes. Um, I'm really excited about the cloud work that we're doing. I think it has multiple years to get to a point where it's like it's as transformational as it can be. So I think, as like many things, that will play out. Uh, but when I look back with you know the bringing online to console in a big way, the way that Jay and the team had set that up, Jay Allard. Um, I just think there were some really foundational decisions that they made uh, that were pretty critical to what we're doing today and, and maybe in a little bit of where the industry is today. So, um, yeah, I still think that's probably the biggest thing. But we, you know, we're we're striving to make an impact with the work that we do now. And uh, I guess time will only tell. But, yeah, I still think Xbox Live for us is a, a pretty critical moment at the time of Xbox. I know Phil needs to leave in like 30 seconds. Phil, just a yes or no answer. Did you think Game Pass would be what it is today? I did now that makes I'm, I'm not like the smartest guy in the world so it's not like i saw everything and um i just think it made sense it almost and the, the side that i think is now starting to come out more is from a creator standpoint like from the the player side like the value the discovery i thought all of that my my friends a shared library with all my friends all that stuff i think was i was just really going to be important in it and it has a creator if i'm building a game right now and i'm not one of the biggest kind of anticipated games that are out there my biggest issue is discovery how do i get the discovery of the games i'm sure you guys hear it from people all the time it's why they want to talk to you guys get on the shows so the things that we're able to do and the goal was that game pass actually becomes a great discovery platform for games and that we can pick some games that we want to highlight we used to do this with our summer of arcades and other things which were these little kind of curated moments um, and, I, and that's what Game Pass has turned into for us is an opportunity to go take the ascent or take, you know, take a game that's coming that we want to go and put it on a pedestal and have people see it because we think there's something that's special about it. 
Uh, and that was the part that I'm really happy to see the vision is, is, has kind of come into focus. And um, it's been great to hear more of the creators talk about that ability um, that the platform is giving them. And that's our goal, like, because there's so many games that get created, so many great games, and it's just hard for creators to find uh, the customers who might love their game. And if we can be a help with that through Game Pass, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's time well served on our part. There you go. Phil, thank you so much for joining us for this. We're going to have to have you back, and we're going to have to share you with the X-Cast boys at some point, I'm sure, too. <laughs> you I stay away from Paris Lily. You stay away from them. <laughs> I need Blessing to give me the answers to the questions, too. So I don't like, like, <laughs> oh, like I a fool, you. more of a fool. You got me? I'll feed them to you. <laughs> I, I, appreciate that. I appreciate that. No, great job with the show. I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, and like I said before, I always appreciate the positivity you guys bring uh, to every time you guys show up on the show and it's just a, a good thing for our industry and and keep at it well done thank, thank you so you much man hey well done to you too phil spencer yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're doing a pretty good job <laughs> i appreciate that thank you all right thank you so much man everyone let us know in the comments below what you thought of this episode until next time love you